how to create and upload a resume on LinkedIn. Hello everyone and welcome back. In this video today, I'll show you guys where you can upload your resume on LinkedIn, how you could build a successful resume, and what actually is the basic requirement of your resume. So let's jump right in. Now to upload your resume on LinkedIn can seem a bit confusing because when you view your profile on LinkedIn, it has different sections to add your education, your experience, skills, and much more. However, when you directly view your profile, you're not going to find a section to actually upload your cover letter or your resume. So to actually upload a resume that you have built that is very standardized for you that you want to use to apply to different jobs, you're going to go into your LinkedIn account, then click on me on the top right. Once you click on me on the top right, you are going to click on settings and privacy. Once you click on settings and privacy, you're going to click on data privacy on the left menu. Once you click on data privacy on the left menu, you will see different sections. So scroll down over here. So once you scroll down into your data privacy and over here, you're going to find a section called job seeking preferences. So you're going to click on job application settings. And once you click on the job application settings, you're going to find a section called share resume data with recruiters. Simply click on upload resume over here. And over here, you're just going to upload your standard resume that you are using. Now, what this does is that this can help for recruiters to be able to see your resume and they can extract the information that they need without having to ask you for your resume over and over again. You can see you can upload in the form of a doc, docs, or PDF. And that is how you upload your resumes on LinkedIn. Now, we all know how to upload our resume, but what actually is going to create a good resume? Well, let's take a look at some Canva templates, what works and what does not work for resumes. So head on over to Canva and just do a quick search for resume. All of these types of resumes are terrible why they are highly stylized which is not a requirement this is not going to look good especially if you're trying to go in a more professional setting these types of resumes do look like a canva template and that is not the appearance you want now some resumes might seem nice like this one but again it's very canva-esque and it also does not have a section that focuses directly on your work experience because you want that to be the highlight of your resume now this is a good resume but it has one flaw which is a picture so usually for resumes, unless it is required, unless you're a model or your work or career is related to your appearance, you don't need to include any images. This type of resume works amazingly. So it's really standardized. It has the name on top. The basic contact info goes directly into a summary and then work experience, education, and then key skills. Again, if you take a look at some similar templates, you're going to find that they work pretty well. So this one is nice, but it does not need to have an about me section. The work experience could simply be moved up and education could be moved under work experience. Now, you can pick out any template that fits this particular format, or you can even structure your own. This is not a unique format. You can easily build this even on Word and it's not gonna be too difficult to build this. But I'm gonna take this design and I'm gonna get started with customization. And I'll show you guys some more edits to help you in building a better resume. Now, one thing you're gonna note is that with Canva, if you like a template and it's re really basic like this one, you can easily edit it like this. Then another thing you want to ensure is that you don't wanna add your full address. A lot of people look at these templates and they view full addresses and they add their own full address. For your resume, you only want to include the city that you are based in. 
Additionally, if you do have a portfolio website, add that, but don't add any random website that you created that is not maintained into your resume. Then you can also choose to include your work phone number. After that, we have a summary, which I'm going to leave it as it is. Then you have work experience. Now, another really major part of adding your work experience and your education is that it needs to be reverse chronological, which means that the earliest thing that you did should be added to the top of your resume. So whatever job you're currently quitting or currently working at should be at the top because you want to add your most relevant or most recent experience to the top and then go back in time. Again, if your resume is super detailed, which means that if you have been working for a really long time at multiple different positions, you don't need to date it back to the 90s. So if you have a really old job where you were gardening, you don't need to add that because that is not going to be relevant, especially if it is really in the past. It's just going to take up space in your cover letters. Now, below that, we have an education section and it should follow the same pattern as your work experience, which means that the most recent degree or the most recent certification or diploma, whatever you're doing, should be added to the top. Now, another mistake I see people making is that they include their CGPA. Now, this is something that this particular resume has done, but they have written that as a 3.9. So unless it is a really, really good percentage, you don't want to include it. So if it's something that's average, you can skip it and you don't necessarily have to include that in your resume and you can leave it out. After that, you will see at the bottom, there is a section for key skills. Now, one thing you could further improve in this type of template is that instead of making key skills something that is listed at the bottom, you can just copy this section from here. So I'm just going to copy this and I'm going to delete this. And then I'm going to take all of these sections from the top. I'm going to make sure to select these all together and list the key skills on the top. The reason for that is recruiters don't want to know a lot of info unless they know who they're hiring. And they look at skills as a priority, not as something that they could compromise on. So you can usually add your key skills and your summary. Additionally, the summary is a bit too long. You can usually shorten this by a couple of lines, make it three to four lines, not any longer. You don't want to just be talking about the same things that are mentioned at the bottom. So there's no need to make it excessively long. Then make sure that everything is spaced out correctly and you're following a good format. Everything should be well aligned. And once you have completed your edit on Canva, you can click on share on the top right. A drop down menu will appear. Click on download and download this as a PDF standard. Once you do that, you can go back into LinkedIn and again, simply click on your me section, click on settings and privacy. Once you click on settings and privacy, you're going to go into your data privacy scroll down, go into your job application settings, and then simply upload your resume over here. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to leave a like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And if you have any questions or queries, leave those in the comment box down below. I would love to know what you guys have to say.